Greetings there, lads and lasses. When I was a small child, I had the strange device known as the Nintendo GameCube, which I remember being the only console that used the tiny baby discs instead of, well, regular discs. Now, for this console, there was obviously a large amount of Nintendo games that I liked to play, such as Super Mario Sunshine, Star Fox Adventures, and the legendary Metroid Prime. But there was also another game I loved to play, one that wasn't made by Nintendo. This, of course, was the incredibly enjoyable Rayman 3, Hoodlum Havoc. Now, obviously as a small child, I wasn't interested in what games came before it or how the games tied together into the main storyline. All I cared about was having a fun, enjoyable experience with cool characters, enemies and set pieces. And recently I started to enjoy all that over again due to the remastered Rayman 3D on the Xbox 360, which by extension is now available through backwards compatibility on the Series X. And as I play it now, as an adult and someone interested in script work and media, it made me question what the previous games in the franchise were like, how the series evolved and grew, and how now the characters in the world of the Rayman franchise have, despite how unique and interesting they are, seemingly been abandoned by Ubisoft and left to stagnate. So let's start at the beginning. Despite the first game being released in 1995, the actual concept of Rayman began much earlier, in the 1980s, as it was a concept dreamt up by the future creator, Mikhail Ancel, in his teenage years. Ancel was an absolute lad, teaching himself how to design, compose music and write code in order to pursue his dreams of being a video game creator. Oncel actually managed to join Ubisoft when he was only 17 because of a chance meeting with a Ubisoft employee called Nicholas Chalkron and in doing so would be allowed to develop and do the graphic art for his own games for several years. He would then pitch the idea of Rayman to the executives of Ubisoft in 1992 who enjoyed the various ideas that Oncel put forth and agreed to fund the project. The game ended up releasing on two consoles the Atari Jaguar and the original PlayStation 1. The game was a side-scrolling platform adventure, with the main goal is to go to different worlds and free the captured Electoons in each level to defeat the big bad. You would also fight enemies, collect spare lives and unlock different powers and upgrades throughout the game. After its release, Rayman became a highly popular game in both sales and reception, giving high praise from critics and selling 400,000 units in the first year, 900,000 units within two years, and it was the highest selling game for the PlayStation in the UK. Due to the success of the game, a sequel was then greenlit, being a more narrative focused game that would undergo a massive gameplay change compared to the original, turning from a 2D side scroller to a third person 3D action adventure platform. The main story of this game would revolve around Rayman trying to fight back against a band of galaxy faring robo pirates that seek to conquer worlds and take their powers. In order to fight back and save the world and its inhabitants, he needs the four masks that will awaken Polocus, who is the god of their world. Rayman 2 was released for a wide variety of different consoles and platforms, being the Nintendo 64, Windows, the Dreamcast, and both PlayStation 1 and 2. The critical reception of the game was again mostly positive, with the gameplay and art style being especially praised, and while I can't seem to find out exactly how well it performed worldwide, in the UK it was awarded a Silver Sales Award, showing that it managed to reach at least 100,000 copies sold in just the UK. With the success of the second game, Ubisoft once again wanted a second sequel to the series. Ancel, however, wished to broaden his horizons in the gaming world, and began to develop a new Ubisoft game, Beyond Good and Evil, leaving Rayman 3 in the hands of a new development team. Rayman 3, Hoodlum Havoc, kept the third person platform gameplay from the previous games and incorporated new elements into it. When going to a new world, there's some skate grinding levels and during the course of the game you gain access to new and interesting power-ups, used for traversal, puzzles and combat mechanics. The game focuses on Rayman and Globox fighting back against Andre and the Black Lums, who want to take over the world. Throughout the game you'll go through a variety of different biomes and encounter a variety of different enemies in your quest to stop his attempts for world domination, and rescuing some tinsies along the way. When I think of Rayman, this is the game I always think of, this is the type of game I want more of, and the game itself sold reasonably well on both the GameCube and PlayStation 2. And it's unfortunate that after this game, the series just kinda declines, at least from my perspective. You see, after this, Ancel was coming back to work on the Rayman games, 
and his next game, Rayman Raving Rabbits, but it being a third person platformer again, with Rayman and Andre having to team up to stop the rabbits from taking over the world, with an idea that the Robo Pirates would come back in an unknown capacity. Unfortunately for Rayman, Ubisoft signed a deal with Nintendo to help develop more games to promote the Wii, and as such it became a party minigame to incorporate the motion controls and to not push the hardware too much. Because of these changes and the restrictions on the creative vision of the game, Ancel left the project. Now, while Rayman Raving Rabbits 1, 2 and TV Party all sold reasonably well and were generally well received, it also put a heavy emphasis on the rabbits themselves, despite Rayman being the main character, and as such, after the initial trilogy of games, the name Rayman was quickly dropped from the title. All wasn't lost, however. Well, at least at first. Ancel was quick to pitch another Rayman game, this time being a 2D side-scrolling platformer called Rayman Origins. It would be made through a new tool called UBR Framework, which allowed artists to draw silhouettes and images that can easily be dropped into interactive environments, allowing a lot of fluidity and creativity at a lower budget. When the game was first worked on, it was being developed by only five other employees, with the idea that it would be an episodic game that released different levels or episodes each month, before it became its own fully fledged game and got a bigger budget and more employees. During the game, the land of the living dead invades the Glade of Dreams and the rest of the world, causing the Bubble Dreamer, the god of Rayman's world, to start having nightmares and the rest of the world becomes full of monsters and corruption, leading Rayman to need to set the Bubble Dreamer free and set the world right. Now, while the game itself did not meet sales expectations, because of the relatively cheap manufacturing process that UbiArt allows, it was still profitable to Ubisoft, and alongside the positive critical perception, the game was given permission to release DLC and for a sequel to begin development. Ansel was quick to develop Rayman Legends, a sequel to the game that was originally planned as a Wii U exclusive. However, due to the poor performance and reception of the console, Ubisoft delayed the game to make it multi-platform. The game took the original design of Origins and added a wide variety of new gameplay gimmicks and game modes, greatly expanding on its predecessor. The plot takes place immediately after the characters fell asleep at the end of Origins. Rayman and the heroes are unable to wake up for over a century, during which the main villain once again starts to manipulate the Bubble Dreamer, causing nightmares to once again appear all over the world, with Rayman being woken up to help set things right. Legends, despite again not meeting sales expectations, did manage to get a good reception from critics and this time it outsold Origins, selling well over a million units by the end of 2013, with further sales generated by the PS4 and Xbox One releases the next year. Unfortunately, that's been about it since 2014. He appears as a spirit in Super Smash Bros Ultimate and he's going to be used as a downloadable character in the Mario Rabbit sequel, but apart from that, he's been absent from the gaming world of today, and with Ancel retiring from gaming in 2020, it's unlikely that we'll ever receive a fully fledged Rayman game anytime soon, with Ubisoft putting more emphasis on the rabbits and their marketability. Honestly, I would just love a new Rayman game. It just feels like there's so much untapped storytelling potential, especially once we see the prototypes for the original Rayman 4 that have been released recently. And Rayman himself has such a unique character design that he could easily once again become a prominent character in gaming history. But unfortunately, it seems that Ubisoft just doesn't have any interest in the character. And while I hope that changes sometime soon, I highly doubt it. Thank you for watching my video. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed it. And if you're feeling very generous, please consider either looking at more of my videos or checking out my Patreon. But overall, I hope you had a very pleasant day and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.